Hello, welcome back to Physics 12. Uh, here we're going to be looking at section 1.1 from the Nelson textbook. And this question is actually quite difficult, so please take your time with it and ask me any questions that you may have on the comments, okay? So this is question number 8. And here we're given a position time graph. And it says that it represents the motion of a race car moving along a straight road. All right, uh, from what we can tell, it shows that the direction is east and it is parabolic in nature. So if you recall, a parabolic motion means that for a position time graph, it is speeding up. But they didn't ask that yet. Let's see what they are asking us. In part A, they want us to determine the average velocity for the entire trip. So in this case, to calculate the average velocity, we are going to calculate the velocity using the endpoints for this entire trip. So what I mean by that, the endpoints are on the graph. So at the initial position and at the final position. So here we can label this T final D final and this is going to be T initial and D initial right because we're looking at the graph here so to calculate the average velocity it is just the slope of the secant line the secant line is just the line that connects the two endpoints so here we have average velocity for the entire trip. And when we're given the position time graph, it's just the slope of the secant line. Okay, so average velocity but notice that they didn't say the average speed. So average velocity is a vector quantity. So that's why I put the arrowhead in there. So that's going to be our displacement during that time interval divided by the change in time. Which actually turns out to be just a slope, right? Because here the rise is the change in position. And the run is the change in time. So this is like the rise over the run the final minus the initial t final minus t initial right and here df and di represents final position and initial position so now let's just put in the values that we have from the endpoints so 400 mm, it's a little bit more than 400 so maybe 410 Okay, let's calculate this. 410 divided by 14. 29 meters per second. And because the value is a positive value, and we usually, usually associate positive with representing east direction, so here we can put east. Right? Because average velocity, we need to include the magnitude and direction. So where we get the 410, that's just an approximation, right? Because here in the white line, that's the 400, it was slightly above, so I guessed 410. So you might have guessed a different number, not guessed, but estimated, and it should be more or less correct. Now... Uh, let us do part B. Part B wants us to determine the average velocity for the last 10 seconds of the motion and to explain why are the two average velocities different. So 
they ask us to calculate the average velocity which is just displacement divided by the change in time so since they said the word average once again you could think about it as the slope of the secant line and the time interval that we're interested in is the last 10 seconds so the whole time interval that they have here in the graph is 14 seconds so the last 10 seconds are from 4 to 14 so at 4 that would be our t initial and the initial and at 14 we're going to use the same values as before so tf df and let's draw a secant line because the average velocity is the slope of the secant line from a position time graph so now we have the formula change in position which is displacement or the change in time so last time we approximated the final position to be approximately 410 so let's be consistent but now the initial position is at the time 4 seconds so maybe that's approximately 20 meters 14 minus 4 Let's calculate this, 410 minus 20, 390, divided by 10, uh, 39 meters per second. And we got a positive value, and because we're dealing with average velocity, we have to indicate the direction. So the direction, we're going to put east. Now the interesting part is that we need to try to say why are the two average velocities different. So notice that for the whole time interval from 0 to 14 it was 29 meters per second. And from 4 to 14 seconds was 39 meters per second. So the reason is that during the last 10 seconds the object was already in motion. So we expect the average velocity for that time interval to be higher then if we are to consider a time interval which the object was starting from rest because if the object starting from rest the average value will be lower so that's the main difference now you might want to rewind that to make sure that you understood it now let's look at part c part c asks us to determine the instantaneous velocity at 4 seconds, 8 seconds, and 12 seconds. So now to calculate the instantaneous velocity that's going to be the slope of the tangent line. The slope of the tangent line we have to approximate the tangent first of all from the curve. So from this graph but you know it's kind of hard if you're using the textbook because then that means you might have to draw your textbook or use a ruler not so easy how to do this question without uh, messing up your textbook if you take a screenshot it's a lot easier so again uh, here they want us to calculate three different instantaneous velocities at four seconds at eight seconds and 12 seconds so how we draw the tangent line at the point that we're looking at so let's first look at the four second mark and suppose we were to zoom in to make this clearer at 4 seconds and then you pick another point that's very close to 4 so 4.00001 and then you connect those two points with a line and from these two points you have at the four second mark and the other nice point so what we mean in math by a nice point is where the value is easily read from the grid so notice here if you follow along 100 and 8 the white lines they intersect nicely with our pink line so this value is very easily read 
So we have two points. Because in order to calculate the slope of the tangent, you require two points on the tangent line. So here we have the point 8 and 100. And here we have the point 4. And maybe we have to approximate mm, 40. Your numbers could be slightly different, so that's okay. And that's what makes this question hard to check at the back of the book. So it's a good thing that you're watching the video to see that you got the main idea. So V, I, and S for instantaneous at 4 seconds is the slope of tangent in DT graph. And because we are dealing with slopes, it's just the rise over the run. So it's the change in position values over the change in time values. D final minus D initial, T final minus T initial. And notice that here instantaneous velocity is a vector quantity, so don't forget that we're going to have to specify the direction as well. And for the final position, since we already estimated from before our data point, it was 100, initial position was 40. Eight seconds minus four seconds, 60 over four. What is 60 over four? 15. Wow, we got a really nice number. 15 meters per second, and since it is a positive number, it is in the east direction. So we're gonna repeat this, but now we're gonna look at the other instantaneous velocities at the eight second mark and then 12 second mark. So we repeat the process. So we look at the eight second mark and the point very close to it and we draw the tangent line and we stop once we get a nice value that we could re read off easily from the graph. Whoops. Here we can easily read at the 14 second mark, the position is 300. At the 8 second mark, the position is um, maybe 130. And we're going to use those two values to calculate the instantaneous velocity. V I N S I N S for instantaneous at eight seconds. Once again, the slope of the tangent line. Okay, I forgot the values. What were they? Three hundred and one thirty. Fourteen and eight. Okay, let's calculate this. Okay, approximately 28.3 meters per second. And now uh, we still have to find one more, right? We still want to find the instantaneous velocity at the 12 second mark. So it's going to be the slope of the tangent that we draw at the point at 12 seconds. So let's go draw the tangent and then we're going to approximate the values to plug into our formula. Oh, 
here we got a really nice value at the 14 second mark it is 400 and at the 12 second mark it is 300 so 400 minus 300 14 seconds minus 12 seconds okay that was really good uh, so this makes sense because you see at the object is speeding up so you suspect that the instantaneous velocity is increasing so at 4 seconds it's 15 at 8 seconds it's 28 at 12 seconds it's 50 so it is speeding up so that is correct with what we expected it to be now for the final part of this question they want us to sketch a qualitative velocity time graph for the motion of the car so they want to go from position time graph to velocity time graph qualitative okay so let's make a quick sketch now if you need some help with these I did a lot of them in grade 11 and in grade 12 you won't really have to do this so much so don't worry about it so much it's just for completeness sakes for this section that I'm doing it but you won't really have to do it throughout this course so don't panic okay that's our position time graph and what we can take advantage of is that we already know some information we know at 4, 8, and 12 seconds we really approximate the tangents and we even know that the slope of the tangent at each of those we got the value so V12 was 50 V8 28 I'm just going to put it as 28 and V4 is 15 so those are the instantaneous velocities at those time at those at that instant in time at each respective instant of time 4 seconds, 8 seconds, 12 seconds so if we want to sketch our velocity time graph we might want to pick those values as well of time because we know what happens at that time and because the velocity values are all positive I'm going to plot them all in the positive axis right because the slope of the tangent gave us positive values for all of these so we're going to plot it on the positive axis of velocity so at 4 seconds the velocity was 15 at 8 seconds the velocity was 28 and at 12 seconds the velocity was 15 and here if you look at the tangent at the very beginning of time it is almost flat if it's almost flat the velocity is zero so you could say that it starts at rest so you know another data point all you have to do at this point is just connect them with the line of best fit so our velocity time graph as we expected it should be a diagonal line and this shows you that the velocity is increasing with time so that's how we answer this question uh, stay tuned for the next one which is really challenging as well it will take a bit of time and please stay tuned